Uh, no promises have been delivered to people at this estate. None, at, none whatsoever. So you could start with once upon a time we all had jobs. Ho 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 ho. Right. And because we are it, it was like a fairy tale. It was like a fairy tale. This is a fairy tale. Once upon a time we all had jobs. And we were earning. And we decided amongst ourselves to support those who weren't. We decided to look after each other. That's how it started, because of all that we've just talked yes, about. Yes, I so think men of people so are fighting back. We've got quite a, a number of activists yeah. on this estate. Yeah. I don't know yeah. yet whether you've ever met the theatre group. That originated, and they're all unemployed lads and lasses that actually live on benefits. And they have actually got a theatre group together to get it over to people in the way they know that the people on the manor and other estates like it would understand what they're on about. Not intellectual jargon of a leaflet coming through your door and that they actually spell it out and bring some humour into the situation because without humour, at times you would be under. Talking about £700, don't worry about the cost. If Margaret Thatcher's Dennis was to die tomorrow morning, she wouldn't worry about how much it cost to bury him, would she? No, she wouldn't. No, no. well then. No. Your husband's worked all these years. It's about time we paid him back now. Well, there's one thing, love. At least I'll be able to bury him with dignity. Excuse me, what are you doing in here? Come on, let's have you out! John Goodyear, he came to one of our meetings, and he were listening, and this, that, and the other. And then, uh, all of a sudden, he stood up and said, uh, well, has anybody ever been interested in doing theatre? So we all looked at him as much as say Shakespeare. You know, we can't do Shakespeare sort of thing. So um, he says, no, he says, theatre's a good way of getting over to people, you know, any protests or anything like that or anything you want them to know. We looked after one another. Yeah. Make that point yeah. clear. Yeah. And this There's is an agreement that we look after one another. Yeah. We, care. we care about her husband, so he can have £100 as well. That's, that's yeah. what's got to come out. When we've put our show on, we've actually watched the people in the audience and they've been saying, oh, we didn't know that was going to happen. And is that going to happen to us? Are we going to have all this money cut off? And to me, the theatre group is um, a way we can get points over to people, whether it's political or whether it's just comedy or whatever, the, whatever it is. But at the same time, it's a relaxation for me. And I think if you work on this estate, and you're doing voluntary work or even paid work, you've got to have some relaxation time. They look a bit spotty, then. Yeah. <laughs> About some of these up here, Barry. Don't know. Twenty-seven pounds here, I think. Yeah. Don't know. Can't okay. get it down. Thirty-five pence of white cabbage. Yeah. Right. Got us a bag of onions. Right. Potatoes. Yeah. What about carrots? No. Swedes? Parsnips? No. No. Well, including family allowance, I get uh, about £78 a week. Now, out of that, I have to put £20 a week aside for gas and electricity. So that brings me down to about 58. And if you divide that up between four of us, that's about £14 a week each. Out of that, you've got to clothe yourself, shoe yourself, feed yourself. And if kids want help from school, you know, like such as cookery, or they want to go somewhere, that could be extra pound or 30 bob or 
20 pence or something like that. Coffee, and it, it, are we having coffee? Oh, yeah, coffee. Uh, it all, all amounts up. So, I mean, by the time you've done, £14 a week isn't enough for anybody to live on. Tea. Hey, what? Are you looking for anything on market? I want some white shoes. Why? The black is all right, but the white is falling to it. I want a pair for some boots. Yeah, I want some for our Cheryl. There's people on the estate who they don't look the best. They don't live in the best conditions. Now, do you class that as being poor and poverty because they don't look so clean and they live in them conditions, or have they got a lot in the family what they're in? No, I'd have to I go to the Wednesday market. I mean, everyone calls it unemployed market. I don't know how it first got its name, I'm sure. Uh, probably because it's setting on clothing. Twelve to ten. We are Keller. Yeah. I go down for shoes for my oldest girl. Um, so yeah, I go for the bargains in the shoes. Well, she wear yellow. I should have known you should wear any colour as long as your shoes. <laughs> Can I take these down, look? Four ninety-nine. You gonna try that or not? Not know why. I don't think the what she wants. Ooh. What do you think? Yourself? No. Yeah. You should wear it. No, I don't either. Yeah. You're not pointed enough, are they? How do these come back up here now? I feel sorry that <laughs> when you're on unemployment, you afford nothing. You live hand to mouth. It's shocking to be there. You can't afford anything. If you, as much as a pound or two pound a week HB payments, it counts. Ideally, for you to be on unemployment or supplementary, whichever you call it, you can't have anything to be paid out in a week. You've got to exist, and that's all that people do, they exist. Over 60% of Manor people live on or below the official poverty line. 75% of householders have no car, and only 1% of people own their own homes. It's always been the dream and the ambition of the Conservative Party that what used to be the luxuries of the few should become the daily experience, indeed the necessities of the many. It's happening with homes, it's happening with shares, and it's happening with savings. And the result has been a greater prosperity. It's not only our standard of living that has increased, it means we've been able to put greater resources into health and social security. But you can only do that when you first created the prosperity. And all this has been achieved by government and people together. The government running things well, like any good housekeeper, and the people responding. I go out with the dog for a walk in the mornings for half an hour. Take with me a carrier bag and a magnet to test any bits of metal or I pick up, which is, if it's not magnetic, it's, you know, worthwhile weighing in for scrap. And it gets me my cigarette money and things like that each day, like so. And there's always stuff there, dump and builders and such people, people throwing their household rubbish away, pans and saucepans and all sorts of things, like, you know. Just depends on days, there's never anything there, like, you know. Then again, there's another day, you might have earned five pounds or something like that. There's a lot of scrap around here if you. You're willing to go breaking in these houses, like, you know, but the thing is, it's not worth the trouble if you get caught doing things like that. I just walk around on square land and do it there. I took uh, voluntary redundancy, hoping I'd get somewhere else, but it was too late. Everywhere was shutting up at the same time, then, you know. And I've tried other different places, but nobody seems to want you now. I mean, say, at 40 years old, you're too old now. They don't want to know you. <laughs> You might say to me, well, why do they get into a condition like this? Why do they uh, accept and just let things go around them? I can tell you why. Because they're so bloody well pushed down there that they can't lift themselves up anymore. They're so desolate. There's no hope. 
they're living in houses that's falling down around